Welcome to my study. This is kind of a special place for me. I spend time here studying the Word of God and preparing sermons and spending early morning times of prayer. And I just want to welcome you. This is a special place for me and uh, I want to share some things with you from my heart so I chose to speak to you from inside here. I want to speak to you about uh, falling in love with God, falling in love with the Word of God. I think they go hand in hand. If you fall in love with the Word of God, you fall in love with the God of the Word. And if you fall in love with the God of the Word, you fall in love with the Word of God. And I hope that doesn't sound confusing, but I don't see them as inseparable. And uh, how do I learn to fall in love with the Word of God? You know, I've thought about Jesus and uh, his childhood and growing up and those kinds of things. And those, those are the kind of the things I want to share with you. He, um, he attended synagogue as a boy. He grew up in Nazareth and they had a synagogue there. Now the synagogue, let me say a little bit about it. By the time of the New Testament, by the days of Jesus, the synagogue had become firmly established as a Jewish institution where they studied the traditions and the scriptures and the customs of the Jewish religion. So Jesus would have attended the synagogue as a boy growing up in that. In fact, he may have had classes learning to read and write from the rabbis who taught in the synagogue. The synagogue had a certain order to it. Now, synagogues, the ruler of a synagogue was not a priest. He was someone elected by the town members and he was a man of character and somebody that was very familiar with the teachings of the scriptures. And he was, it was a paid position. And he would do everything from the grounds, uh, you know, keep the grounds and the building and grounds committee, he was that. He also ran the order of service and where the men would sit on one side, the women sit on another side. He would have a man that would uh, blow the chauffeur at the beginning of Sabbath, when the sun finally reached a certain place and the figure of sun down, the beginning of Sabbath, and he'd take his chauffeur and he'd blow three long blasts on it, which Jesus would have heard because now Sabbath has begun, begun and they would have their Sabbath day meal and then the, in the morning they would get up and go to synagogue. And at the end of Sabbath was also three blasts on the chauffeur to end the Sabbath. But he would go to synagogue and as a boy he would sit with the women and the children because the men would sit on one side, the women would sit on another side. And up in front, the ruler of the synagogue, behind him, one of his major responsibilities was for the care and the well-being of the scriptures to make sure they were taken care of. Certain things they had to do to make sure that uh, they were kept locked in a chest and no one tampered with them and they were got when they were removed and taken out, it was for synagogue service. Jesus would have sat with the women and children at first, but after the age of 12 to 13, he would go with his parents, usually a feast of Passover or one of the major feasts they would have in Jerusalem, and there he would have his bar mitzvah, and they would ask him certain questions, and they would examine him to some degree, and then a priest would probably lay hands on him and pray with the father and mother, and they'd bless him. And then when he went back home to Nazareth, he no longer sat. It was kind of a big deal. He would no longer sit with the women and children. He was allowed to sit over with the men. Now the men sat in an order like the older, the aged men would sit up near the front and then the next ages. So he would have sat in the back, but he would have sat on the men's side. They were, he was a boy becoming a boy until the, his bar mitzvah. Then he was a boy becoming a man. And that was a very significant thing in him, but he would have heard the scriptures. He knew the order of service and what they would do. I wonder, as a young man, when he read scriptures, what he thought of the scriptures, because he learned to read and write. When he was 30, the beginning of his ministry, in fact, I'd like to go to this one text and read it for you. When he was about 30 years old, I'll pick up the narrative. It's in Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Let me stop there for a moment. In other words, the rule of the synagogue would say, would anyone like to read the scripture? Because they had no specific preacher or teacher. They just 
the ruler of the synagogue would choose somebody that he evaluated to be competent and able to read scripture and then expound or give an exposition of that scripture. So he basically said, is there anyone here who would like to read? And Jesus stood up. It says that he stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. So he took these scrolls. He didn't have a, a Bible like we did. He didn't have the privilege of having the scriptures like we have them today. He'd take the scroll, and he'd roll them this way until he would find the place with no chapters and verses. He had to be fairly familiar with it. And he found this place in Isaiah, and this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now Isaiah, the next phrase, also says, the day, and the day of vengeance of our God. But he omits her. He stops just before that, because that's a future day. And this is the day that Jesus is reading about, the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister, and he sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Now, we'll stop there. So you've got to kind of get a feel. This was his custom. He grew up in this synagogue. He had read that same scroll as a young man many times, very familiar with it. In fact, in Jesus' ministry, he quotes from Isaiah and the Psalms more than he does any place else. So he's very familiar with this particular text. I wonder now, as I'm, I'm thinking about falling in love with God, and falling in love with the Scriptures, I wonder if it was possible as a young man, 20 years old, he may have had the opportunity to read. I wonder as he would have read something like Isaiah 53 as a young man. He's reading about himself. Who hath believed our report? For he shall grow up before him like a tender plant, like a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. I wonder what he thought when he read those. I think he knew who that was about. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I think he's embracing things of the truth of Scripture. Jesus loved the scriptures. He loved his father. He knew the plan they had decided upon and agreed upon. I wonder when he read Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I wonder when he read Isaiah 28, 16. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone precious cornerstone. I wonder what he thought as he read them. I'm trying to develop in my own heart what must have been going on in his mind as he looked at scriptures that he knew from a child. And now he is getting ready to expound upon them and saying, this day these scriptures are fulfilled in your eyes. He's going to say that to the people. Isaiah 40, 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm sure that encouraged his heart. Isaiah 41.10 fear, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Jesus, when he was tested in the wilderness, used scriptures to combat the devil. He would ask the people in, in his day that would ask him questions. He says, have you not read in the scriptures? See, Jesus had a love for his heavenly Father. He also had a love for the scriptures. Isaiah 45, 22, Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. 
Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none other. I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things which have not yet been done. Behold, all my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. Isaiah 55, 6 through 9 and, and many other scriptures in Isaiah. But seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thought, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And Jesus would read things in the book of Isaiah, and I think he loved them. He said, this is true. This is about me. This is my Father's word. And I think this love for his Father and love for the Scriptures held hands with each other. With those thoughts in mind, I wonder about us if our falling in love with God's Word will enhance our falling in love with God. I want to share just some thoughts on that. And I'm going to make just some real clinical kinds of comments. And I hope they're a blessing to you. But here's the first one. Get yourself a paper copy of the Bible. I mean, I'm so thankful for the online Bibles that they have available. People on their phones and computers can, and God has used that in so many powerful ways. Uh, our son will be ministering on the street and talking to a person from another country and is just totally unaware of the Bible. And he'll give them a Bible app and they can read it in their own language, whether it's Chinese or Spanish or Russian or Arabic or whatever it would be. So there's many of that. But for, for us, the group that be listening to me right now, get a paper copy. Well, I would just encourage if you don't have one to get one. And then personalize it. Familiarize yourself with it by reading it. Become very familiar with certain portions of it. Study some things from it. Memorize from it. Meditate on it. Underline in your Bibles. Uh, my Bible here is just full of underlining things. I've just, here I've been in Isaiah, and highlight it. Verses that you feel like God's just speaking to you from, just highlight it. I have things copied and cut and pasted in the front of my Bible here. In the back side I have a number of things written in it. Just personalize it. Make it yours. Um, write notes in the margins. Just write, just write a note. I remember the, as I was studying years ago, the virgin birth of all things as a young believer, and God revealed to me the truth why the virgin birth was so important. And I remember when I understood it, and I knew I didn't figure this out on my own, that God had revealed it to me. I took my Bible and I just held it to my chest and to my heart there. And I realized something's happening between me and this book. Now this is not that original one. I have worn out a number of Bibles. I have read a number of Bibles and personalized them and copied over study notes for our children, for our grandchildren, just a number of them. But the more I do that, the more precious it becomes to me and the more precious God becomes to me. In 1 Peter chapter 2, and I think it's about verse 8, it says this, Unto you who believe, he is precious. That was penned by an old rough fisherman. Jesus had become precious to him. Well, I'd encourage you to carry it. Everybody has a phone, or most people have a phone, not everybody has a Bible. But when you carry your Bible, people know that it's a Bible. They'll, they'll suspect that book is, in fact, God's Word. God bless you for listening. Take care. We'll see you next week.